Okay, so there's a perspective about the true nature of consciousness that deep meditators and indigenous cultures, quantum physicists and psychonauts all around the world have experienced or at least tend to agree on. And that is that consciousness is non-local. Meaning that consciousness isn't just something that's inside of our heads, but instead it's absolutely everything in and around us. It's the entire universe. So the idea is that everything in the universe is a form of consciousness and as human beings we're expressions or outgrowths like branches of that consciousness and we're always connected to it like a river that connects to an ocean. Or as a Nobel Prize winning physicist Max Planck said, I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. So with this perspective, our brains aren't responsible for creating consciousness, they're more like antennas or receivers of it. Albert Einstein realized something similar about our connection to the universe. He said that a human being is a part of the whole called the universe. He experiences himself as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. Another rational or scientific translation of this would be that the atoms that make the human body are the same atoms that make everything else. Your dog, your plants, or even a table. They might look different, but on the most basic fundamental level, everything is from the same source, right? The famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson said that for him, the most astounding fact about the universe is that when he looks up into space, he doesn't feel small or disconnected. Instead, he feels big and infinitely connected because he knows that he's made of the exact same building blocks as everything else. So the universe isn't something that's just out there with the stars, it's also inside of him and in each and every one of us. So everything is one big old field of consciousness. Now our brains are tools that help us to experience a narrow slice of that field. Now this is a really interesting thought and even though we might never have the scientific tools to come to a final answer about the full nature of consciousness, it does look like there's already a lot of scientifically grounded ideas that point in the direction of our brains being these receivers of consciousness and not creators of it. There's a fascinating book by the psychologist Ian McGilchrist called The Master and His Emissary and it's about how our two brain hemispheres take in and interpret reality. McGilchrist goes into detail about how the left and right hemisphere have a different role and responsibility for interpreting the universe of information that's all around us, but also how even though both hemispheres are involved in everything the brain does, the left and right hemisphere work very differently. So generally speaking, the right hemisphere is responsible for taking in raw information from the world around us in an unfiltered way, in all of its complexity, its detail, all of its wonder, and then the left hemisphere comes along and it filters, decodes, and unpackages that information and projects a simplified or manageable representation, like a translation of that raw data, so that we can make use of it and act in the world. It's as if the left hemisphere gives us a simplified map of reality, and that map, that representation, is what we call our day-to-day -day conscious experience. So for example, if you found yourself in the center of Paris for the first time and had no clue where to go, you'd be overwhelmed. There'd be too much information to take in to be able to navigate the city efficiently. But as soon as you pick up a map of the city, you'd be able to start navigating and getting along with your day, now of course, that paper map of Paris isn't the whole city itself, it's just a functional and simplified representation of the city. And in that way, what the science of our brain hemispheres is suggesting is that our daily experience of reality is more like a map of reality and not full reality itself. It's a simplified representation produced by our left hemisphere so that just like a map, we can function on a daily basis without being overwhelmed. So if you ever wondered why someone who's in a deeply meditative state or having a psychedelic experience can spend hours and hours amazed and overwhelmed by the beauty of simply looking at nature, well, 
It's not because they're creating something that isn't there, it's because they're experiencing the world through an unfiltered, more right hemispheric perspective. So you can, for example, thank your right hemisphere for letting you appreciate the beauty of the trees as you walk through a park on your way to work, but you can also thank your left hemisphere for not letting you get overwhelmed by their beauty and unbelievable detail. So a normal mind lives in a balance between the two hemispheres. It's a yin and yang relationship. Now this idea of the brain functioning as an antenna that filters out information to make something useful, well, it isn't a new idea. It's just now we have the neuroscientific evidence to support it. I mean, back in the early 1950s, the famous philosopher Aldous Huxley wrote in his book, The Doors of Perception, that the suggestion is that the function of the brain and nervous system and sense organs is in the main eliminative and not productive. The function of the brain and nervous system is to protect us from being overwhelmed and confused by this mass of largely useless and irrelevant knowledge leaving only that very small, special selection which is likely to be practically useful. According to such a theory, each one of us is potentially mind at large. Mind at large has to be funneled through the reducing valve of the brain and nervous system. What comes out the other end is a measly trickle of the kind of consciousness which helps us to stay alive on the surface of this particular planet. So, People have intuitively understood these ideas about the nature of consciousness or mind at large for a long time, but now the science is catching up. What's really amazing is that our technology represents this idea as well, right? I mean, our brain interacts with the infinite nature of the universe just like our phones interact with the infinite nature of the internet. No one would ever say that a smartphone has the internet inside of it or that our phones created the internet. No, we all know that our phones are functioning as receivers, antennas that tap into the internet. And then we use our apps, our browsers to represent and filter that information so that we can use it. And after seeing how the brain hemispheres work together, they seem to be doing the same thing with consciousness. First by receiving reality through the right hemisphere, and then the left hemisphere steps in to simplify, decode and represent that information so that we can use it and operate in the world. Fascinating.